From Chicago's Can TV, a look at the week's events is reported in the newspapers, in the blogs and online, and on radio and TV. This is Chicago Newsroom. Well, hi again. Welcome to the show. It has been another one of those busy summer news weeks because CPS finally passed their budget, a budget that presumably every single living human being on Earth hates for different reasons. It gives too much money to the charters. It doesn't give enough money to the charters. It fires too many teachers. It caves into the unions and lets them get paid for too much. And of course, the big issue is the pensions. CPS pays way too much for pensions. The critics all seem to agree on that one. And we'll never be able to get through until we get things on track and get rid of those greedy unions that are forced to and force them to cut back on benefits and pay more for the benefits they do get. You've heard all this before. But is the reason we're in this mess the fact that government agreed to all those benefits and then simply stopped meeting their obligations to pay their share? Well, we'll be talking about those things and a few other matters today with HuffPost blogger and vocal, I think it's fair to say, vocal CPS critic Matt Farmer, who's joining us again on the show. Matt, glad to have you here. Thanks. And also, we're happy to be joined again by Mark Brown, one of Chicago's great writers and a Chicago Sun-Times columnist. We want to talk with Mark about the pretty remarkable conversation he had with Cardinal George uh, on marriage, uh, gay marriage, and other issues, and uh, what that was like to sit down with the Cardinal for an hour or so. Welcome to the show, Mark. It was, uh, it was uh, very enjoyable to sit with the Cardinal. <laughs> I'm sure it was, and he invited you. He did. Uh, I'm not sure he totally realized he'd invited me, but uh, <laughs> he, uh, I had written something the Cardinal didn't like, and he said uh, he wrote me a kind of a strongly worded letter and said, a if you wish to ask, discuss this matter further, uh, yeah. you know, I, I'd be available. And I, you know, I jumped at the chance. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, so you glad I did. So you went over for afternoon tea at the mansion. Uh, you know, tea was never offered, but water was offered. Okay, good, it's, good. Uh, right. uh, it was, it was very, all very cordial, and I, I hadn't been to the mansion before. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, it was uh, enlightening. I'm sure it was. We'll, we'll talk about that, but I, I think maybe we ought to just, uh, in the sake of good journalism, start with the CPS budget that passed yesterday um, and come back around to the Cardinal. Uh, Matt, you, as I understand it, you chose to take your child out of school yesterday and uh, march down in front of the school board building. Is that correct? Well, I agreed to allow my daughter to okay. miss school yesterday. Sorry, she right, wanted yeah. to come, yeah. and, and I gave her permission. Uh, in direct contradiction to the mayor of Chicago. Who, who said I would be uh, harming my child That's by right. doing so. That's what he said. And my child learned a lot yesterday. Uh, but a day out of school is a day less education than she would have had otherwise. Right, and, and a longer, fuller day uh, to boot. Mm -hmm. uh, we participated in the boycott, the one-day boycott, and while others, you know, including friends of mine, were upstairs in the meeting pleading their case, as it were, uh, to the hand-picked school board, we were marching and uh, trying to draw some media attention to issues that are affecting neighborhoods across Chicago. While the boycott from a, a sheer numbers standpoint, uh, you know, I, I don't know that it was a, a success. I didn't expect a, a large percentage of kids to be skipping school for any number of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did have a critical mass down there and, and we were heard. What impressed me about this crowd as opposed to uh, crowds I would see, for example, over the past years when it related to school closings, is I saw a lot more folks hitting the streets with their kids from neighborhoods that have been largely silent uh, on school issues, at least downtown with CPS. Mm. Folks from uh, affluent northwest side neighborhoods, southwest, or excuse me, uh, uh, some, some south, some, uh, like Mount Greenwood area, they were out there, and their schools are getting cut to the bone. Their programs, particularly in light of this new full day, uh, mm -hmm. programs in art, music, et cetera, are disappearing. They realized they were sold a raw deal, mm -hmm. and that's why they're out there. And well, it's going to continue. Y you are seeing, I think, maybe some uh, new awareness on the part of people in the in the quieter communities where they've been struggling with overcrowding and, and just physical plant issues for decades that they've been told there's no money, we can't do anything with it, and suddenly 50 schools get air conditioning. Now granted, those are, there's, there's specific situations there, but I mean, it, 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 at some level, there's something 
<laughs> something that just sort of sticks in your craw and says, wait a minute, how come those schools are getting something now and we're not? And we're not even in line for getting anything, so. Right, well, what we've seen, what were gifts of, of air conditioning, iPads, uh, libraries, to these so-called welcoming schools mm -hmm. that were uh, gonna receive kids from the, the schools that were shut down this year. And rather than calling those what they are, which are, are perks and, and, and a way to get that uh, school population moved from one set of buildings to another, Barbara Bird Bennett said this summer that those were not perks, but those are things that all children should have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Begging the question, of course, why they decided to start with these schools, why so many schools that have long lacked air conditioning and libraries you know, are not being given those things. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but you know, we heard, we've heard so much over the last couple of weeks about this safe passage and, you know, whether kids are going to be in jeopardy as they move from one school to another. And we really saw, I mean, uh, almost a kind of a NATO uh, level response with, I think, practically the entire fire department and police department on call. And, and so, you know, fortunately, gladly, there were no incidents on that first day. But of course, it really does pull that question out about, well, what's going to happen on the 11th? the 19th, the 146th day. You guys have been covering this a lot. What, what's, what's the impression you have of this, of this safe passage thing? Is it, is it, are, we, are we making a bigger deal out of it than it really is? Well, I wasn't out there this week because I was busy with the Cardinals, so yeah. I, I, I'm, yeah. I, I do have to beg off on that part of it. But Mr. I Brown believe, was busy with the Cardinals. We, we'll I, I, acknowledge I, I, that. Uh, you know, I, I believe that they can make it safe enough to get to school and back. Definitely getting to school, getting back is, is when it's rough, obviously. Mm -hmm. I've been, you know, the Safe Passage program is not new. They've had the Safe Passage program. It, it's a nice program. It has its weaknesses. Uh, you know, the schools I've been to, they, they call them the Yellow Jackets. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. the kids all know that the Yellow Jackets only can do so much for you. If there's a problem, the Yellow Jacket is not going to step in. They're supposed to get on their walkie-talkie and get somebody who is equipped to deal with the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's a delay, and kids know this, and, you know, and, and in places where they've had safe passage, you know, it, they can't always get there in time, you mm -hmm. know. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, there will be problems, and things will happen, but I, I, I think... You know, after people get past that initial thing that, oh, those kids can't come into our neighborhood, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and that feeling that, oh, we can't go to that neighborhood, I, I think that that part will, that they can overcome that. You know, I, I, you, know, I, you know, an interesting thing about this is, where do the safe passage workers come from? Well, they come from these community groups. So it's a way for the mayor to get the community groups or, you know, or the churches or whatever to buy in because they, they put people on the, uh, on the payroll. On the payroll, 600, I think, it, right? It's, yeah. it's smarter than Daly's uh, uh, Give the Churches the, the Vacant Lots program, <laughs> really. But, but it's, it's also a, a logical follow-up to the, the program where pastors were getting paid, as you recall, a year and a half ago to fill busloads of people to protest school closing. Mm -hmm. So this is not the that's, that's who that's, that's who's going to be in the buses the next time they need them, right? Yeah. right. Uh, yeah. with, with the safe passage programs that we, you talked about earlier that were existing in other schools, Mark, though, I don't think we saw the all hands on deck, let's get streets and sand out there, let's get the fire department out there till further notice. It, we, we've had everybody short of the Bears offensive line out protecting these kids during this first couple days of school and, and if Jamarcus Webb keeps performing at the level he is, he's soon going to be out there. So the question is sustainability <laughs> and, and also that's going to dovetail with whether there's continued media interest in this in October or, or mm -hmm. November. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, my guess is that there won't be continued immediate interest until that first day when somebody gets hurt. Then the choppers will be in the air again. But well, I, don't you think they it just? I mean, I think they intend to cut back on this. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're not gonna. Right. Right. But they're just trying to get through the initial period yeah, and yeah. then. Well, well I, I do. You mentioned choppers in the air, though. We just saw earlier this week, it was Alderman Cardenas 
who was talking uh, via Twitter yeah, and then later right. to the press about using drones for safe passage. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. we, we can joke about <laughs> right, choppers right, in the air, but right, this is a, an right. elected official. And I, of course, I did wonder when I heard uh, the good alderman's uh, suggestion whether he meant that these drones would just be used as surveillance tools or whether, like in Yemen, they can just take out <laughs> bad guys. I mean, it, it'd be like what Mark was talking about, you want to talk about instant response. Now, a drone, that's the way to go. You can just, yeah. But anyway, we, um, we make light of this. But, you know, I have been wondering if maybe we haven't kind of over-dramatized this thing about the gang influence and all that and whether, whether there's going to be uh, gang fights within the schools during the day because they're mixing gangs up and all that. I, obviously, we have no way of knowing whether that's really going to happen or not. But I mean, is it? Are are we more concerned about this than we need to be? Are the are the principals and and the security people going to be equipped to just handle these problems? Well, uh, you're the school expert, but uh, well, let me jump in. I, you know, from what I have seen in Chicago public schools, the school buildings themselves are the safest part of these kids' day. Mm -hmm. They're the, the, you know. Even in the worst schools, uh, and uh, you know, I, I, there's so many good people, you know, trying to look out for the kids. Uh, you know, and, and you know, obviously they have issues. I mean, it's it's the it's the it's the coming and going from the school where you have issues, yeah, and yeah. those are real. And mm -hmm. and these parents who are scared, they live they live in those neighborhoods, and 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 somebody like me doesn't, and so I take it very seriously with their concern. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I know the aldermen in those wards uh, were all very concerned. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they understand what what people are are up against. Yeah, yeah. I, I would encourage anybody who's interested in, in figuring out the answer to your question to go back and listen to the two-part This American Life special that Linda Lutton and a couple of her both local and national colleagues did. They were embedded at Harper High School for I believe five months. Mm -hmm. You can find mm -hmm. the program online. And one of the things I will not forget about, I think it was the second episode, Linda had talked with a Chicago police officer who went on record and, and explained why these kids essentially had no choice but to affiliate with a gang. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not encouraging it, I'm just telling you right. how it is. And I believe Linda said, are you going to get in trouble yeah. for asking yeah. that question? Yeah. And it's it's powerful radio, and it's yeah. it's instructive. In essence, it's it's like you're assigned to a gang. It's not it's not your own voluntary thing. You you're told which gang you're going to be a, assigned to, and so forth. It is very, it is very compelling. Um, let's talk a little bit about this um, the 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 drama that unfolded a few weeks ago. It's a relatively small piece of news, but I think it has it has much larger political implications. This this overnight demolition of the little field house out at Whittier Elementary, La Casita it was called. You were there, you were live tweeting it. In fact, that's how I found out that it was being torn down was all of a sudden I'm starting to get these tweets from Matt Farmer about it. Um, what, what, what were they thinking, I guess is my question. Why, why did this happen? Why did they just go in there and, and like just overnight start the process of pulling this building down? Well, they, they've been trying in one form or another to demolish this building at least uh, since 2010, and I, and, I, and I believe it goes back uh, before that. I go back a ways with this particular building. I spent a lot of time, weeks, with the moms who occupied it in fall yeah, of 2010. Yeah. Some point they got comfortable enough with me to ask me to sit with them with Ron Huberman in October 2010 at the negotiating table mm -hmm. when we got Mr. Huberman to agree that the building would not get destroyed. Mm -hmm. uh, the following spring when Mr. Brizard came to town, the moms asked me to come and sit with them at a table at CPS to try to get the same assurances. During that particular meeting, I remember when a group of us left the field house that, that Monday in June 2011, while we were at the table with the new uh, chairman of, of CPS schools, we had got calls from the field house from a couple of the moms who were left behind that the police were trying to get in right at that point. After they saw all of us leave, uh, 10 or 11 of us leave, we had to tell Mr. Brizard, please call off your dogs. You know, this is mm. not the time to do this. Mm. He denied having any involvement in that. In any event, we fast forward to f you know, a couple of Fridays ago, and I, I learned about it probably a half hour before you did in the same way. A, a friend sent me a message. It was uh, under cover of darkness, all very expedited, and the after-the-fact explanation, the mayor was out of town that weekend, was that this needed to be done immediately because kids were in danger, kids' mm -hmm. lives were in danger. Mm -hmm. 
Now the credibility of the folks who are spinning that tale can be evaluated by what we read this week from Channel 5 News. What did they find? They find that in terms of child safety, 11 of these so-called welcoming schools have not had fire inspections. One of them for the last four years, several for the past three years. Mm -hmm. We found that none of these schools across the city have filed emergency preparedness plans with yeah. the Illinois State yeah. Board of Education for the last seven years. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about child safety issues, we got to take this with a grain of salt, particularly when the city said they had an inspection last spring that found essentially the same types of conditions. Well, why did you allow kids to continue to occupy, kids and parents to occupy that building for the last few months? Mm -hmm. they, they wanted this thing crushed because it was a symbol of political resistance to which, a mayor. Which gets me into the political side of it that I think both of you can, can talk to, and that is that I, I don't think there's anyone in this room who would, uh, who would not believe that Mayor Emanuel signed off on that demolition. I mean, it was, it was brought to him in some way or another, and he winked or nodded or moved his little finger in some way to say, yeah, go ahead and take it down, and take it down while I'm out of town, and do it late at night, and do it with, you know, on a, on a weekend so there's as little news coverage as possible. And plenty of overtime, I'm sure, too, on and, the weekend. Yeah, well, you know, kind of a Miggs Field uh, sort of operation. So just as political animals, why would Mayor Emanuel want this to happen? What, what's, what's his thinking on this? I mean, does he just want this thing done? He just wants it out of his hair? Or, do, or is, it, is it even more cynical than that, that he really wants to send a message, there's only one big dog in this town who makes these decisions and don't mess with me? I, I can't figure it out. Mr. Brown? I, you know, I, I don't know why they did it, and, I, you know, I... I had forgotten that it was until this happened that it was still a source mm -hmm. point out there. I, you know, I don't think it was. Uh, I don't think there was anybody in the city going, "Oh, the you be, until this that all oh, those uh, little uh, old ladies out there are really showing the mayor who's boss." Yeah. I, I, you know, and I've never really quite understood that situation. And yeah. Matt, I guess, I mean, our reporters always told me it was, it was an odd. An odd an odd situation there, of, mm -hmm. of, uh, and, and I and I just decided I was never going to get in there yeah. and uh, and have to pick up sides. Uh, I I don't know. I, but I, I mean, really, I, I, I guess the question I'm asking is, wouldn't you, if you were advising the mayor, uh, you know, if you were his PR consultant or something, say, look, this thing is just going to burn itself out. Just let it go for another year or so. Those people will finally leave or whatever. Something will happen. <laughs> I don't but, think but, they're ever going to leave. <laughs> but, it, well, but even if they don't, it, they're not getting any news coverage. You reignite the issue by going in and doing that. Why, he must, they must have known they were going to reignite the issue. They wanted to reignite the issue. Can't, can't, what I believe is that the mayor never would have engaged in such a heavy-handed tactic, much less over a weekend, uh -huh. if this building or the parents involved were in Saganash, Edgebrook, Edison Park, Mount Greenwood, you pick the neighborhood. Yeah. He, he wouldn't have done it. He, he would have alienated too many people that, yeah. that he relies upon at whatever level. Yeah. Uh, he, he figured he could do this in Pilsen. He knew he had the blessing of uh, Alderman Danny Solis. Yeah. And, uh, Which, of course, raises another he, whole, there's a whole other subtext. He did it because about, he could. Yeah. All right. You know what? We, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this. Columnist gets phone call from the Cardinal <laughs> saying, I'm not happy with some of the things you've written. Come over. Let's talk about it. Uh, no, not a phone call. All right. Just a letter. Well, a letter. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, what I what I'd written that upset him was uh, well I'd been following the issue of the church cut, cutting off funding mm -hmm. to some community groups that uh, uh, received funding from the uh, from a national or Catholic organization uh, uh, CCHD. The, the, I have it written down because I knew I wouldn't I, remember I, it. It's I, I, the Catholic I, Campaign for Human Development. Catholic yeah. Campaign yeah. for yeah. Human Development, which is uh, it's a, it's a, it's it's started by the 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 Catholic Bishops Association, which is you know it's a little bit different part of the church, a little more liberal mm. historically, right? And uh, they fund uh, this. This isn't just direct charity. They fund community organizations to organize the community, you know, to, to do 
you know, community work. Mm -hmm. And they, uh, they did, a lot of this money goes to immigration groups. Well, these immigration groups, in turn, are part of the Illinois Coalition for Immigrant and Refugee Rights, which is mm -hmm. the all-powerful uh, immigration uh, group in, it pulls everybody together in Illinois. Very strong politically, very shrewd, works very closely with the Catholic Church over mm. the years mm. to enact uh, you know, most of our immigration reform in Illinois. Well, the, this immigration group decided to endorse the same-sex marriage legislation that's pending in Illinois. So the church cut off funding to all these little community groups that are part of this coalition, even though they themselves didn't really have anything to do uh, with this endorsement. Well, you did a, a, a really, a really nice column about this little Logan Square organization that that Al Albany Park. I'm Albany sorry, Park, Al Albany Park, Park Neighborhood Council. Wonderful people. The, the Cardinal himself says great people doing great work. Uh, in this case, they've got a program that uh, that was started by kids. The kids, you know, teenagers thought of this idea that they would teach other kids how to fix their bikes. Mm -hmm. And you know, so and they've set up a bike shop, and they they hired somebody who actually trains these kids to be real real bike mechanics, and then they bring in another group of kids, and the kids teach the next group of kids how to be bike mechanics, and everybody in the neighborhood brings in their bikes and gets them fixed for free. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is a community where a bicycle is uh, is a lifeline. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, but so they lost their funding. They lost their funding. I said. You know, you're cutting off to know your nose to spite your face, as my mom would have said. Mm -hmm, you know, the, mm -hmm. there's no sense dinging these groups. Cardinal said, hey, no choice. It wasn't even my decision. It was the coalition's decision, the immigration coalition's decision to back immigration rights. That just, well, we automatically, we had to cut them off. Mm -hmm. And indeed, there's, you know, there's something in the contract that says you can't, uh, if you're going to get our money, you can't support racism, you can't support war, you can't support, uh, you know, you can't support same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, or abortion. Abortion. Right. Uh, so, uh, so we got into it on that. And then some politicians uh, jumped on my story and sent a, put a, published a letter in the Tribune that scolded the, the cardinal. And that really made him mad. Because <laughs> they, they kind of said, oh, you're turning your back on the poor and yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. And, you know, just to, get at the, just to get at this group. And the cardinal says, whoa, you're just trying to manipulate the church to further same-sex marriage. Well, there's a little bit of truth in that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, and, uh, uh, and I, and this actually, this happened at the same time that the Pope uh, had made some uh, right. comments uh, uh, regarding uh, gays, and he said, who am I to judge? And right, it was right. widely reported, and people took and, it to be very favorable. And, and the, cardinal, the cardinal said that the press misinterpreted who He am says I to that judge. we got that wrong. Yeah that, yeah, that 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 the, the Pope wasn't really saying, you know, he, he wasn't saying you can't judge uh, whether or not it's, you know, homosexuality is right or wrong, or, or gay sex is right or wrong. It's sinful. It's morally wrong. The the, uh, the Cardinal says, and the Pope w wasn't saying anything about that. And uh, you know, I, I clearly the Pope wasn't changing church doctrine. He was just setting a nice new tone but right? he was he was indeed setting a different tone and, he was setting and, a different and tone. the cardinal is cardinal not didn't like setting, that. is not it doesn't want a new <laughs> he, tone he, did, he, did, he likes the he likes the old tone and doesn't <laughs> think and thinks that you know he hears what he want, what he hears in in the pope and hey he's he's an expert at it i mean i, I yeah, you know yeah. i, I well, he, did he say, could be right. I he, don't think so. He told you, we didn't invent marriage. The church didn't invent marriage. The state didn't invent marriage. Nature gives us marriage. Well, that's, that's uh, uh, yes, that's, you know, it eventually, and in, in the Cardinal and I discussed, you know, his beliefs on same-sex marriage and the church's position. You know, the church is fighting very hard against this legislation uh, in Springfield, and uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to get another go at it again this fall at some time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the, his argument is it's as I, I didn't really I don't think I fully had grasped it before. It's not a a theologically uh, you know faith based argument against it. He argues uh, I said it's a matter of reason. 
that it's that mm. nature tells us that only men and women should get married, and that they have roles, they have they gender have roles, roles, they have gender roles, and, really, uh, and yeah. I and I, as I point out in today's column, um, you know, <laughs> in your and I's lifetime, those roles have changed a lot. Right, <laughs> right you know, right. I. I, I what was once thought of as a man's role or a woman's role, uh, just... Well, but also to be clear in, in disclosure, I, I've got some Catholic schooling in my background. Uh, i got a, Ignatius as a middle name, although I haven't been a practicing Catholic since Reagan was in the White House, but... It, it, Not it, connected. <laughs> no, but, but as I recall, you know, in terms of, of uh, Catholic Church having marriage as one of its sacraments, that didn't occur until the 13th century. And so there is not, again, uh, a lot of discussion about Christian marriage in the Bible. We've got uh, Adam and Eve, Old Testament Jewish marriage. We've got Jesus at the, the wedding at Cana, which by all accounts was a traditional Jewish wedding. So again, we, we, we've got the creation of the Catholic Church marriage sacrament in the 13th century. The church is free to do what it wants to do in terms of marriage. It's free to do what it wants to do uh, with some restrictions, uh, you know, with its money. So uh, it's neither here nor there, but I, I always find it interesting <laughs> to, to, to know when these these sacraments uh, arose. Mm -hmm. um, in our uh, two-minute bonus here, as we end up at the show, we should really just talk about pensions a little bit. You've both talked a lot about the pension crisis in Illinois, and uh, I, you know, I won't even throw out a, a, a premise question here because we have relatively little time, but what is the solution in Illinois? Go for it, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, I'll just... Uh, <laughs> Come on, Mark, in a uh, sentence. What would you do if you were governor? Governor? Okay. Or well, what would you do if you, if you uh, were the uh, Speaker of the House? Well, I mean, you know, everybody's going to have to give a little. We're going to, you know, we're going to have to... Uh, uh, the unions are going are gonna to have to take a, a hit, and the taxpayers are going to have to take a hit. Now, a lot of people are trying to make this... Uh, solely on the backs of the workers, mm -hmm. and you know they might get away with it. I don't know. Uh, I understand why they're doing it that way. State's broke, hard to raise taxes now. Uh, but at some point, you got to you got to do more to try to pay for it. Uh, I've just the last minute. I, I've just been amazed watching with our. our Democratic majorities and super majorities in Springfield for, for several years, the inability to use that legislative block to really accomplish much of anything. I don't know what the point of accumulating this power, this majority is, unless you are actually going to wield it. A and to sit and wait and say, well, we need a bunch of Republicans to sign off on this, it just seems like a, a cowardly way to lead. So, I mean, are you, at this point, are you? Uh, you're very much a, a pro-union guy. Are, are you willing to concede at this point that, that the unions are going to have to start putting in more to the pensions? They're going to have to. They're going to have to give something back financially. You're talking about the unions across the state. Well, well let's talk about CTU in ten in ten seconds. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on in those negotiations. I, I think there's got to be discussions at the same time, both on the revenue side and the benefit side. I don't think we can. Uh, ignore either, and I don't think uh, the working folks, the teachers who are on average making about forty-one thousand dollars a year in pension, mm -hmm. uh, sh should take the, the big hit on this. That's where we're going to have to leave it, guys. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really always enjoy talking to both of you. Mark Brown from the Chicago Sun Times, HuffPo activist, blogger, lawyer, musician. Matt Farmer joining us on the show today. Thanks. You've been watching Chicago Newsroom. It's a community service of Can TV, and you know that you can find us here on cable, but you can also watch this address. Go to this address, and you can see us anytime you like on TV by iTunes. You can subscribe there, too. I'm Ken Davis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here again next week, whether you like it or not, right here on Can TV. Take it easy. Bye.